Corsair has just released their 2019 range of gaming mice, with ever-improving performance and the classic RGB bling that we've all come to expect. Now as you can probably tell, my voice is completely shot. However, that has not stopped me from testing these mice pre-release to let you guys know whether the new Iron Claw and M65 Elites are actually worth buying. Now both of these mice have been upgraded with an entirely new sensor, with the brand new Iron Claw flying the flag for the more larger hand gamer, and then the revised M65 aiming to please first person shooter fans. It's the Iron Claw that's perhaps the most interesting, as the larger frame puts this nearer the scimitar in size, but without any of the extra buttons that most of us probably wouldn't use in the first place. The shape is highly contoured and sculpted, which is great for right handed palm grips, but it does make it entirely unusable for lefties. It's a very snug fit, which did take a few days to get used to, but I have to say that it's worked a real treat at reducing hand fatigue in those one more turn scenarios in Civilization VI. Having said this though, it's not really the sort of thing I think I would recommend to the smaller handed gamers, as I'm someone that's got probably quite medium-ish hands, and I still find it quite big to lug around sometimes. So if you're someone that's going to be frantically moving your mouse from left to right, you like a few flick shots and you've got smaller hands, it's probably not the right mouse for you. The M65, however, is a mouse I've always loved and I've had a real soft spot for it as it was actually one of the first products I ever reviewed on this channel. Its staple sniper button allows the DPI of the mouse to be altered whenever it's pressed and it allows for quick navigation of the game world whenever you're doing things like running but it also allows you to finally line up that headshot whenever you're aiming down the barrel. For better or worse though, there's not really that much that's changed and I think you'd be hard pressed to find that much to differentiate this from one of its older units, as the design has only been subtly tweaked, which Corsa say is to maintain the strengths of the M65 design. The new 18,000 DPI optical sensor is going to be the biggest change, but there's also a 15% weight reduction which will likely be appreciated by many as it brings the mass to 97 grams before adding any of the optional and adjustable weights. If you've used an M65 before you'll feel right at home as the aluminium frame still fits neatly in the hand but there is a slight redesign to the sniper button which allows your thumb to rest a little bit more neatly and tidily. Let's talk gaming though as ultimately these are gaming products so are they any good? Well, as you'd probably expect, they both do a fantastic job at cruising you through your title of choice. And while each do have their own individual strengths and weaknesses, I really doubt that you're going to find many faults with their performance. Because the sensor does such a fantastic job, it's right up there with the best as far as I'm concerned. A mouse is a very personal thing and it's very difficult to compare apples to apples. But after swapping from my personal mouse, the Logitech G900, I have to say I've found the Switch very painless to say the least. PUBG, as most of you will know, is my game of choice, and despite being AWOL over Christmas for a couple of weeks, I returned to the battleground with the Iron Claw, and I actually won the third game I played. I know this is not the most scientific test out there, but it is about as real world as it gets. I do much prefer the M65 Elite however, as for me personally, the shape just fits my playstyle more favourably and it's a little easier for flick shots. Weight wise they're both quite similar at roughly 100 grams, but the M65 does allow you to add weights to alter the centre of gravity. It's definitely something that's worth experimenting with. If you are choosing between the two, then the real selling point of the Iron Claw is its larger size. So if you do fit in this camp and you don't want a dedicated button for sniping or you don't want all of those buttons for MMO use, then this is something I would advise that you look at but I'd probably say that it's worth going down to a shop and actually testing it in your hand personally as I found that it has been one of the more odder, stranger mice shapes I've used so far. The last piece of the puzzle is the software and in my opinion Corsair's IQ still remains the market leader in this regard. It offers a clear and simple way to configure and calibrate your mouse to your individual personal preferences and it allows for adjusting and syncing the RGB lighting with other Corsair RGB products. I will say that Logitech software does integrate games a lot better with the lighting features, but on a mouse when you're going to be covering this up, well, it's hardly a big issue. If you are interested in current pricing, I will leave my links down in the description below, but let me know your thoughts on the M65 and the new Iron Claw. Which one do you prefer? Do you have larger hands? What mouse do you use now? Really interested to hear your thoughts. Please hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video though as it really helps out. Get subscribed and all of that jazz as I say leave comments. Basically help out the SEO. Let's get this video 
going out there. Let's do all that. But thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you in the next one.